Hi everyone, I'm Shira, your AEC Tech Girl, back with another Dynamo tutorial. Today in part three of our series, we're diving into the world of lists and lacing in Dynamo. That's why I wore some lace today. These concepts are crucial for efficiently managing data and creating more complex structures in your scripts. So whether you're a beginner or looking to brush up your skills, this episode is packed with essential tips and tricks. Let's get started. First up, lists. Think of lists as a way to organize and manipulate multiple data points simultaneously. Just like how you organize files and folders on your computer, lists are Dynamo's way of organizing data. And just like folders on your computer, you can create subfolders within folders, multiple subfolders within multiple folders, and build on your organizational system. In Dynamo, lists can be anything from a series of numbers to a collection of objects from your Revit model. Just like we learned with our nodes in the previous episode, there are ways to create, modify, and query lists. In this episode, we will break down lists, look at how to create them, modify them, and query them. And we will visually represent these lists with points. So not only will we work with lists, but we will be creating points. Next episode, we will start working with geometry. And points are the building blocks of geometry. If geometry is a language, points are the alphabet. Let's get started with creating our points using lists. Now, points are nothing more than a series of coordinate values. The point we'll be creating today will be created using just an X and a Y value. Let's again work backwards to determine our inputs. We will go to geometry, points, then point, and within the create group, we will grab the by coordinate x, y. As soon as we place the node on our screen, you might have noticed that a point appeared in the background of your workspace. Up until now, we have always been working in the graph view navigation of our workspace, but we can switch to background 3D view whenever we want to navigate any geometry we create. Now let's use lists to create more than one point. In this example, to get the X and Y values, we will create a range of values. Just like in the last episode, I will show you how to do this using the standard Dynamo nodes and a code block node so we can build on and work with code blocks more and more. Since we are creating lists, logically, we will go to the list library, then generate. Within the create group, we will grab the range node. Let's place a watch node in between our range and point nodes so we can see the values being generated. Note that I typically wouldn't place a watch node here, but when teaching, I want to be able to see every step of the process. It will help you learn how these actions work. Once we connect, you will see the watch node populate with values, even though we don't have any inputs in our range yet. This is because there are default values already preset into the node. You will also notice that a bunch more points were placed in our background 3D view. If you hover over the inputs of the range, it will tell you what the default values are. You will also see what value to input, which is a number. Let's grab a number node. If you remember from the last episode, the number node will be under input, then basic. Let's copy the number node three times by holding control on our keyboard and dragging. Then inputting the values that we want. Feel free to play around and change these values and see how the points in the background view change. We only created the range for our X value. Now we have to do it for our Y. I will show you how to do the same thing, but instead of using the number and range nodes, we will use a code block. Double click on your canvas to create a code block. Like we discussed in the last episode, a code block is using Dynamo's textual scripting language called Design Script. And as we know, scripting is just another language we use to talk to our programs. Just how Spanish sounds different to English, the way we tell the code block to create a range requires a certain format. The format is the start value, dot, dot, the end value, dot, dot, and then the step. That's it. Let's copy that watch node to see our range of numbers. Just like with the range, play around with the numbers and see how they change in your watch and background view. Here's another tip for you. 
let's delete this watch node and I can show you another way to see the data produced by a node. At the corner of the node, there are three dots. When you hover over the three dots, you will see a box appear below the node. This will show you the list of values. You can then hover over it and it will expand to show you all the values. If you want, you can pin it so it always stays open and below your node. Now let's connect this range from our code block to our Y value and see what happens with our points. Feel free to now play around with the values and see how your points change. Congratulations, you just created your first point and list. Let's take a step back and look at these lists. Now when you count, like counting on your fingers, for example, you would say you have five fingers because you would start one, two, three, four, five. However, in Dynamo and most programming languages, lists are broken into indices and indices start at zero which you will see in these lists we've created. So if we counted our fingers again, it would be zero, one, two, three, four. Don't worry, you still have five fingers. It's just that in Dynamo, lists are using a zero-based counting system. While this may seem a little strange to programming beginners, the zero-based index is standard practice in most computation systems. Although we are working with numbers at the moment, rest assured that lists can be composed of any data type. If we look back at our list library, there are many ways to manipulate lists other than generating them. We have sub-libraries to inspect lists, match lists, modify lists, and organize lists. I will show you a few options from each, but I do encourage you to take some time and test all these options out as they will come in handy in the future for managing your lists. Let's first look at inspecting our lists. Some of these will only be used when you have certain data types within a list. For example, the all false or all true will be used when you have a list of Boolean values. Let's, for example, look at count. The count node will return a value for the number of items in the list. You can also get the maximum item, which will return a value for the largest value in the list. Let's now look at a few ways to modify our list. Since we talked about indices, let's look at how to remove an item using an index. This requires two inputs. One input will be the list, and the other will be the value for one or a range of indices. Let's just do one value for now. Copy a number node and put in a value that is within the range of indices you have in your list. I will use three as an example. You can see in my original list, index three has a value of seven. In the list of values produced when removing the third index, the value is gone. That is just one example of modifying a list, but there are many more. Now let's try to organize our list. For example, we can reverse the order of our list. Another important thing with lists is lacing. Let's talk about lacing, and no, I'm not talking about shoes. Lacing controls how lists are combined at the node level. It's what tells Dynamo how to handle data matching when performing operations on multiple lists. Let's show how this works using our points. First, we will set our Y to just zero, so we have a line of points, and simplify our range to be zero, 10, and one. Then let's copy this over and create a second line of points. Now let's change our value for Y to two and change our N value to five. This will all make sense in a few minutes, don't worry. I'm going to go into my background view and zoom in and rotate a bit so that we can see both rows of points clearly. Feel free to do the same. Now in order to help explain lacing, we will connect these dots together with lines. To create a line in Dynamo, you simply just need two points and we have those. Let's go to geometry, curves, and line. We will grab the line by start point end point. Let's pause before connecting the points to create the lines. I want to explain lacing real quick. There are three lacing options, shortest, longest, and cross product. Let's copy this entire group two times and change the Y values so they are each in their own line so we can see all three lacing options. To set the lacing of a node, left click on the three points of a node to set the select lacing. By default, it is set to auto, but you can change this. The bottom one we will set to shortest, the middle one longest, and the top cross product. 
You will also see that each of these lacing options is represented by a symbol at the bottom right corner of the node next to those three dots. Okay, now let's start with shortest. Let's connect the points to the line node. This results in the inputs connecting one to one until one of the lists runs out, the shortest list, hence the name for shortest lacing. Next, let's do the longest lacing. Connect the points to the line node to set the longest lacing. Longest lacing will keep connecting the last input from the shortest list to the inputs of the longer list. Lastly, let's look at cross product lacing. Let's connect the points to the line node with cross product lacing set. Cross product lacing makes all possible connections of all values from one list to all values from another list. All right, are you starting to get lacing now? As I mentioned in the beginning, just like how we organize files on our computer with folders and subfolders, lists can also be composed of other lists, and this is known as levels. We can actually see this within our lines that we've created using the cross product lacing. If you expand the values, you will see a list within a list. This can also be represented at the bottom left corner of your preview where you can see the at one, at two, and at three symbols. This is referencing the list at level. To see this difference more clearly, let's inspect this list of lists and get an item at an index like we did before. Let's grab the node and grab a number node for the value of the index. You can set the level of each input by selecting the arrow at the right of the input. The default sets the level to at two. To more clearly see what the different levels represent, let's hide the previous node's preview geometry. When we set the level to at one, it returns the same values as the previous node. If we set it to at two, it is retrieving the list zero from the previous node. If we set it to at three, it is retrieving the zero index from each sub list from the previous node. Play around with changing the number and levels to gain a better understanding of levels in Dynamo. As we're getting to the end of the episode, I also wanna provide you some tips and best practices. Working with lists and understanding lacing and levels can dramatically improve your efficiency in Dynamo. Here are a few tips. Always check the size of your list when performing operations. Experiment with different lacing options to see which gives the best result. And use list levels to manage more complex data structures. And that's a wrap on lists and lacing and Dynamo. I hope this tutorial helps you see how powerful Dynamo can be when working with complex lists of data. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated. Don't hesitate to drop your questions or insights in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and remember, stay empowered, stay inspired, and always challenge what is possible.